5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Sunday, January 10, 2021. Deutsche Well Report. Germany, Anti-Semitism Commissioner calls for removal of Nazi law leftovers. Germany's Anti-Semitism Commissioner called for the removal of 29 Nazi-era paragraphs that remain in the country's laws and comments published on Sunday. Felix Klein, appointed two years ago by Chancellor Angela Merkel's cabinet, said the worst example was a 1938 Nazi remnant in Germany's present-day law on changing a person's name. Jews in Nazi Germany were required under a 1939 regulation stemming from that law to insert a typical Jewish forename, Israel for men, and Sarah for women, if their first name was not on a typical list maintained by the then Interior Ministry. CNN Report Corporate America halts donations to Republicans who voted to overturn the election. Some of America's biggest companies are suspending donations to Republican Congress members who objected to the Electoral College's votes. The growing list of those corporations, including Blue Cross Blue Shield, Citigroup, C, Commerce Bank and Marriott Mar, comes after a pro-Trump mob breached the U.S. Capitol last Wednesday to fight against the ceremonial counting of electoral votes that confirmed President-elect Joe Biden's win. Al Jazeera report. Kazakh ruling party set to sweep parliamentary polls amid boycott. Kazakhstan's governing party is set to sweep the oil-rich country's parliamentary election, as it has done for decades, with no major opposition groups running in the vote and small street protests swiftly quelled by police. An exit poll by Kazakhstan's Public Opinion Research Institute said the Nur Otan party had won almost 72% of Sunday's vote. As with the current legislature, Two other parties cleared the 7% threshold to win some seats. Deutsche Well report. Six rangers killed in Dr. Congo's Virunga Guerrilla Reserve. At least six rangers were ambushed and killed by armed men in Virunga National Park in the Democratic Republic of the Congo on Sunday. Famous for its mountain gorillas, the UNESCO World Heritage Site has been the site of persistent unrest as a wide variety of armed groups battle for control of oil and other rich mineral deposits. Mai Mai carried out an ambush at Niamat Witwai in the far end of the park. The provisional toll is six park rangers killed along with two Mai Mai. Fox report. Chicago area shooting spree leads to at least four deaths, including suspect, reports. A woman who was held hostage during a shooting spree Saturday that stretched from Chicago to Evanston, ill, was hospitalized with a gunshot wound early Sunday in a rampage that left at least four people dead, including the suspect, according to reports. At least two other people, and possibly a third, were critically wounded, reports said. The shooting of a 15-year-old girl was still being investigated, according to police. Fox report. Pope Francis's personal doctor dies from coronavirus complications, report. Pope Francis's personal doctor has died from COVID-19 complications, according to a report. Fabrizio Socorsi, 78, was admitted to Rome's Gemelli Hospital for a previous health issue on deck. 26, the Catholic news agency reported. The cause of his death, however, was coronavirus complications, the outlet reported, citing the Vatican's newspaper La Servitore Romano. It's unclear when he last had direct contact with the pontiff. BBC report. Indonesia landslide. Rescuers buried as they help victims. The first landslide, in Sihanwang village, West Java, was triggered by torrential rain. Another struck as survivors were still being evacuated. At least 12 people died and dozens more are missing. Landslides are common in Indonesia during rainy season, and often blamed on deforestation. The latest disasters hit the villagers in Sumedang Regency, about 150 kilometers 95 miles southeast of the capital Jakarta, three and a half hours apart on Saturday. BBC report. Indonesia Sriwijaya air crash. Distraught relatives await news. 62 people were on board the passenger plane which plunged into the sea just minutes after taking off from Jakarta on Saturday. There appears to be no hope of finding survivors. Although no one on board has been formally identified, information is emerging from family and friends. BBC Indonesia's Dwiki Marta and Widianingsa have helped to collate the following accounts. We're in grief, still praying for the best said Firza Mahardhika, whose uncle was the pilot of the Sriwijaya SJ-182 flight. BBC report. Twitter deletes China Embassy's Xinjiang, Emancipation, tweet. 
The post linked to an article by state-run media which claimed women were no longer baby-making machines due to action on alleged religious extremism. Beijing is alleged to have forced many Uyghur women to be sterilized or fitted with contraceptive devices, apparently to control population growth. China has denied the allegations. The Uyghurs are a mostly Muslim minority group which lives mainly in Xinjiang province in northwestern China. CNN report. Queen Elizabeth and Duke of Edinburgh receive COVID-19 vaccine. Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh have received their COVID-19 vaccinations, a Buckingham Palace spokesperson said Saturday. The inoculations were administered by a household doctor at Windsor Castle, a royal source said. To prevent inaccuracies and further speculation, Her Majesty, who 94, decided that she would let it be known that she has had the vaccination, the source added. Her husband is 99 years old. Al Jazeera report. Algerian president returns to Germany for COVID-related treatment. Algerian president Abdelmajid Tebboun has flown back to Germany for treatment in hospital for complications in his foot resulting from a coronavirus infection, according to the presidency. The treatment was not medically urgent and should have taken place during Tebboun's last stay in Germany, the presidency on Sunday said in a statement. Tebboun postponed the treatment at the time because of some obligations that prompted him to return home on December 29, it said. Fox report. Bay Area. Stay at home. Order extended indefinitely until ICU capacity increases. The Bay Area has indefinitely extended its coronavirus stay-at-home order as ICU capacity remains extremely low amid surging new cases. Gov. Gavin Newsom had indicated earlier in the week that he expected regional orders to remain in place in some parts of California. I think it's pretty self-evident we are going to need to extend those original dates, Newsom said, according to KTVU. Based upon all the data and based upon all the trend lines it is very likely that we'll need to extend that stay-at-home order. Al Jazeera report. Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt talks and mega dam break down, again. A new round of negotiations between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt aimed at resolving a long-running dispute about a giant dam Addis Ababa is building on the Blue Nile has broken down once again. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, has been a source of tension in the Nile River Basin ever since Ethiopia broke ground on it in 2011, with downstream countries Egypt and Sudan worried it will restrict vital water supplies. CNN report. Canadians call out leaders for breaking their own COVID-19 rules. It was meant to be the trip of a lifetime for nine-year-old Brayden Lousier Hicks of Airdrie, Alberta, who has an extremely rare genetic disease. After the family waited five years to go on a charity-sponsored trip to Hawaii, it was postponed indefinitely due to Canada's COVID-19 restrictions. His mother, Leah Lewiser, says the heartbreak of that was bad enough. Then an Alberta government minister, Tracy Allard, confessed to taking a trip with her family to Hawaii for the Christmas holidays because it was a family tradition. Fox report. Spain shovels out of snowdrifts left by Storm Philomena. Madrid, emergency crews in central Spain cleared 500 roads and rescued over 1,500 people stranded in their vehicles, allowing Madrid and other areas on Sunday to slowly shovel out of the country's worst snowstorm in recent memory. After recording 50 centimeters 20 inches of snow in the Spanish capital between Friday night and Saturday, Madrid and a large swath of the country remained impassable Sunday, with roads, rail lines and air travel disrupted by Storm Philomena. Deutsche Well report. Coronavirus. China locks down two cities a year after Wuhan. The daily number of new coronavirus cases has doubled in China, the country's National Health Authority reported on Sunday. Mainland China registered 69 cases on Saturday, compared with 33 reported a day earlier. The National Health Commission reported that 21 of those people had been infected overseas. The country also reported 27 asymptomatic cases on Saturday, down from 38 a day earlier. China does not classify asymptomatic patients as confirmed cases. CNN report. Deutsche Bank to pay more than $100 million in deferred prosecution agreement with federal prosecutors. Deutsche Bank entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with federal prosecutors who allege the bank violated anti-bribery laws while doing business abroad. The bank has agreed to pay more than $100 million in penalties, prosecutors announced Friday. The German bank entered into the agreement with Brooklyn federal prosecutors remotely. 
The criminal complaint charges the bank with two counts including conspiracy to violate the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and wire fraud conspiracy affecting a financial institution. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell. Thank you.